Right, welcome to uh, lesson four of week two of Julia programming for nervous beginners. Now we're looking at another aspect of uh, uh, functions, uh, namely what we mean by generic functions. And our aim is to illustrate and explain how Julia uses generic functions. So after this lesson, you'll be able to use the double colon operator to specify acceptable input types for the values of the variables uh, in a function call. You'll be able to describe uh, what a generic function is and exactly what constitutes the code of a method of a generic function. You'll be able to explain what is meant by the type signature of a function method. And you'll be able to use the, the methods function to determine the type signatures of all the methods in a function. So it's much easier to understand multiple dispatch uh, from uh, a, a few examples than from first principles dis uh, discussion. So let's look at what uh, a function for doubling, but now we want to be able to double numbers, which we multiply by two, and we want to be able to double words, which means we just put them next to each other. So we create a function called double, and it has two methods, one for each type of input, the input types will be int64 and string. These are types we've seen before. And the operator double colon specifies type. So here we have double and the input variable is x. And then we say that we specify that x must, uh, that if x is of type 60, int64, then we multiply it by 2. And here if x is of type string, then we repeat it to. Okay, so let's look at that. So a double and x int 64 and that is a 2x. Remember that in the discussion of arithmetic we said that um, that multiply by x and 2x just like that are the same, and so, oh, I made a spelling mistake. Okay, and we can also instead say we make it of a type string, and then we want x uh, repeat to. And now we can test it, so the uh, examples on which I want to test it um, are double seven and the string seven and then a double uh, float 64. So let's say we double the value seven. That's fine, that's 14. And we double the string. Seven, so open and close, open and close, and that is the string seven seven. I can make the string space seven space seven, and then that will look like that. But if I try to double seven point zero, it says no, there is no method for floats. We've indicated that we accept in sixty four, we've indicated that we accept string. And as we've said before, a float is not the same sort of thing as an int. So um, there is the methods function. So we can ask, uh, what did we call this? Double. And it says there are two methods. The one method takes x as a string. The other method takes x as int 64. Now, um, Let's look at some other, um, some built-in functions, methods. If we apply that to the include function, which we use to run Julia code at the, uh, at the input prompt, um, it says that all we need is a function name, and it must be of a type called abstract string, which we will not discuss in this course, but it basically, there's only one method. If, however, we use the join to ask for all the methods of join, then there are six different methods, as we discussed when we first looked at the function join. Um, we can have 
join just strings by themselves or strings with one delimiter, so it's the same delimiter between all the strings that are being joined, or with a delimiter and then also a last delimiter where all but the very last of the delimiters are last and um, so that's three methods and those three methods occur also if you want to send it to an I.O. that you define. Um, so what do we mean then by the type signature of a method? So we have that the argument list of a function call defines some values. So um, if we have uh, the type signature of the list of types of the values, this is of the function call. So here we have two values. The first is int64, the second is float64. And here we have the first is float64 and the second is int64. So these two actually have different signatures. But this is easy to do when you have a function call because all of these values are actually completely definite. So when we actually define a function before we ever call it, what do we mean by the function, a signature of a function at the time we define it? Um, and that gets back to this. Here is the function signature and it says we specify that x must be of type string and then there's that method. Or we specify that x must be of type in 64 and then it's the other method. And similarly there are six different methods, six different pieces of code in Julia uh, for the function join. Um, let us recall the function spin. Um, uh, let's include so now we have the function spin and we can ask for methods of spin. And that just says that it's either one or two, but it doesn't actually specify anything about what kind of uh, variables these are, what their type is. It's a bit like the difference between these three different um, possible methods of join. They're only distinguished by where they, by how many values can be put in, but the type of the values actually don't play a role in choosing these methods. So um, let us now compare uh, the errors that happen if we want to double the character or if we want to spin the character. So if we want to double the character x, then it says there is no method. It cannot, it doesn't, it cannot find a method, and so it's not going to do anything. But if we say we want to spin the character x, then what happens is that we are trying to call this method here. And it says we're actually trying to get the index of a character. So we'd have to go into the code of the spin, um, which we have over here. And it says that here we are trying to get an index. So the input in, uh, comes in and we want to get the index of the input actually from front to back. Um, and sorry, yeah, from back to front. Um, and so the difference is that in the case of double, Julia doesn't even start executing the function because none of the methods fit so no method is even started. Um, in the case of spin x, Julia passes the value x to the only method that uses a single value in the spin signature, type signature, and then that throws an error. So, the type operator inside a function argument list is used to specify the type of an input value. This is in, um, so that's when we specify, when we define the function. And then the function of a method is the code in its code body. 
a generic function is a function that can have more than one method, and uh, we can list all the valid type signatures of all the methods of a generic function. Each signature uh, corresponds to exactly one method. Thank you. That's the end of lesson four of week two.